In today's video, you're going to get a comprehensive idea of everything you can do with Claude 3 Opus. Supposedly, within the industry, Claude 3 is better than GBT4. So in today's video, we're going to see whether or not you'd want to spend that $20 and all the capabilities associated with this platform. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and just show you everything you can do with the Claude platform as fast as possible so you can get an idea of whether or not you'd want to purchase this kind of service. So right off the bat, let's learn how we even enable this. In order to do so, you're just gonna go to your account settings. In the settings, we have three different tabs. The first one being profile. This is just gonna be your name and what the chatbot will call you. The second tab here is billing, and this is what gives us access to Claude Pro. These are the advantages with Claude Pro. The first one being Claude usage. What this means in this context is how many times we can, you know, basically proctor a chat and keep talking with the chatbot. If you're familiar with GPT, you're familiar with the fact that sometimes you can keep conversating and then it would be like, hey, not available until 4 p.m. Same situation here. The second one being you get priority access during high traffic times. This could be associated with like maybe they put on a new update. Being a pro user, you still get access to the model at a more stable rate comparative to maybe using it on a free version. Third one, which is probably the big one here, is we get access to Claw 3 Opus, which is supposedly better than GPT-4. And finally, getting access to new features. Let's go and jump into this model today. First major thing to note about this platform is you cannot generate images. So for example, if I were to input generate an image of a dog and hit enter here, you will see that this currently does not have the ability to generate AI images like we see with either Copilot or ChatGPT. Boom, I apologize, but I do not have the ability to generate, produce, edit, manipulate, or create images. Another feature to take note of is that you have the ability to choose between the different models here. So we got Haiku, Sonnet, Opus to give you a nice little graph here. This is kind of how they've structured the quality of the inputs and the outputs associated with the model. If you're using Pro, you're probably just gonna opt in for Opus most of the time. Think of these other models, like the version between ChatGPT 4 and 3.5, you probably lean towards the most intelligent model when dealing with workflow and your progress. Second major thing to note is that this model does not have access to the internet. So if I try something like, can you find me an article on the EV industry and hit enter here, from this response, we can see that it does not have access to the internet. I apologize, but I do not have the ability to search internet or access external articles. So even if I provide an external article as I did here, it still won't be able to internalize it or summarize it. Now that you know the ground level of what it can do, let's find out what it can do in the context of your workflow and why you would choose to use a service like this. First cool thing that this model can do is the ability to actually see pictures. So I'm going to attach an image here. The image I'm attaching is a dog, more specifically an Australian Shepherd. So it's gonna ask what's in the picture and what the breed is. Hit enter here, and we should get the answer of a dog, an Australian Shepherd. And there you go. So it has the ability to read and internalize images. The image shows a dog standing in grass with white flowers in the background. Okay, got that. The dog appears to be an Australian Shepherd based on its medium size. This can go past that. So for example, if you have an invoice that's like physical, you can take a picture of it and it'll be actually, actually be able to read the different numbers and the rows and the text and everything of that nature. On top of that, if you wrote down notes on a sticky note, took a picture, sent it in here, could transcribe it, stuff like that. Therefore, if you can see images and understand what's in the image, you can also read and analyze PDFs or just like any type of large format in that context. I'm going to attach a PDF. Notice that we have the ability to attach five files and on top of that, 10 megabytes each. Let's go and check out this research paper. This research paper is a study on social media and its correlation with mental health. So to gut check on whether or not this thing can actually read the PDF, we're gonna find a very specific statistic to test it on. Right here, we got the total number of individuals aged 18 to 23 who reported experiencing a major depressive episode in the past year increased by 83% between 2008 and 2018. Let's see if it can find this. I went ahead and rephrased the question a little bit, but we got between 2008 and 2018, how many individuals between or aged 18 to 23 experienced a major depressive episode. So if this works correctly, we should see that percentage. More specifically, we should see this output 83%. Mind you as well, this is a pretty big file here with a lot of text. So if it finds this, that's pretty solid. There we go. It did take a couple seconds, but it was able to find that 83% statistic that's relevant to us. What's super cool about adding an attachment to a chat like this is that we also get this nice little sidebar here that shows the relevant content that we're proctoring for. And on top of that, I mean, we can choose different types of font if you choose to do so. Like I said before, it can handle Excel sheets, but not in the way you think. In order for it to actually read this data, we're gonna need to take a screenshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and just do this. And to check if this actually works or not, we're gonna go ahead and gut check it by basically asking it, what is the difference for the phone cost? Coming back over here, let's go ahead and attach it. Here is our screenshot of our Excel sheet. And we're gonna go ahead and ask the difference for this. We're expecting a minus 46 here. For the phone cost, what was the found difference? Hit enter. 
And there you go. It was actually able to find the data that we cared about, project a phone cost, the actual phone cost, and give us our final answer here, which was minus 46. Past what I just showed you, there is a lot more that you can do with Claw 3 when it comes to actually just talking to it, either writing an email or writing out code. So I encourage you to check out that video right there if you wanna see more in depth on those features. But for now, you have a comprehensive idea what the Claw 3 model does for us and whether or not you'd wanna spend the 20 bucks here, ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, there's too many. So I'm actually gonna leave a video at the very end here that you can check out and see which chatbot you would actually wanna use to kind of break it down by use case. Cause a lot of times it really just depends on your use case. I'll see you in the next video. This video helps you break down which chatbot you should choose and where you should put your 20 bucks. That's a random video. That's my face. Make sure you subscribe. I do daily content here. I'll see you in the next video.